Hey, this is Dominic, and this is your home for the cutting edge conversations on optimizing your personal performance, lighting up your sex life, and living a purpose driven life of your own design. These are the topics that Dominic and I have both struggled with in our own lives and still don't always get right. This is Brian. Welcome to the Great Man Podcast. Hey, fellas, quick heads up. In the show notes, there is a link to a 20% off discount code to the Everyman Fundamentals course, which is a four-week online intensive to an intro to Everyman and how to bring more meaning and connection and joy into your life. And Owen Marcus, who's our guest on today's podcast, has generously provided that 20% off coupon. I'll talk more about it at the end of the episode in the outro, but if you didn't make it all the way to the end of the episode, I wanted you to know in the show notes, there is a 20% off coupon that not only gives you 20% off to the fundamentals course, but also the year-long membership to every man. So that's near the top of the show notes. Check that out and enjoy today's episode. For the last three years on this podcast, you guys have heard me tip my cap to a handful of reputable men's work organizations who are out here making a difference in men's lives. Now, of course, the Mankind Project is near and dear to my heart as they were my initiation to men's work. And another group that I have tremendous respect for is Everyman. Now, Everyman was founded in 2016, and their mission is to connect and help men to lead more successful and fulfilling lives. Everyman has a particular focus in getting men out of our minds and into our bodies so we can feel our emotions. In fact, Brian and I use a variation of the Everyman protocol in our own men's group to practice emotional fluency. Now, what propelled Everyman onto the national scene a few years ago was one of their co-founders, his name is Dan Doty, appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast, and that led to big-time media exposure, including a spot on The Today Show. Everyman has been featured in Men's Health, Inc. Magazine, and the New York Times called Everyman the CrossFit for your emotions. And according to our guest today, who I'll introduce in a moment, over 1,000 men have gone through an in-person everyman retreat, and another 1,000 men are involved in their online communities. I think it's important for you guys, right, the man who's listening, to have knowledge of and access to the men's work organizations that I've vetted and would personally recommend because, of course, while I would love for you to do work with us here at The Great Man Within, another organization may speak to you. And the only thing that matters in this long run is you getting on this path. So today we're talking about everyman And our guest for the discussion is Owen Marcus. Now, who is Owen Marcus? Owen is a co-founder of Everyman, and he's here to give you a behind-the-scenes look of what goes on at Everyman Retreats. He is a coach, a group facilitator, and an author. He has a TED Talk, which I've linked in the show notes. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about what it's like to attend an Everyman Retreat and how they do work on your emotions Owen's going to share with you the five primary emotions that men must learn how to identify in ourselves, how our inability to feel our inner world emotions creates barriers to intimacy, the psychological safety conditions that men need to open up, and Owen gives really specific guidance around what that is, which is going to be helpful for you guys who are running men's groups out there, the impact that men's work has on the women in our lives and a, a juicy discussion on why the best night for sex is men's group night. And Owen will share a little bit of a story about that too, which is pretty cool. So enjoy this conversation on men's work, what happens at an everyman retreat featuring Owen Marcus. It is hard to believe that after three years of running this podcast and probably referencing every man and the incredible work that the men of every man are doing in this world, that this is finally the first time that we've had a representative, one of the leaders of, of every man on the show. And I couldn't be more excited to bring to you a, a special man, a wise elder in the space, Owen Marcus. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dominic. This is something that's been a long time coming. I know that we met briefly, I think it was at Esther Perel's the Paradox of Masculinity Conference, wasn't that like two or three years ago where the, she called you up on stage? Yeah, in uh, Ojai. Right. Yeah, that was a beautiful uh, venue. You demonstrated a little something on stage about some of the work that you're going to get into here today. And I just immediately respected your mastery and the fact that you said that you've been doing inner work for 40 years. So I'm looking forward to learning from you. Our audience is looking forward to learning from you. And I think maybe the first place to begin is 
just giving our listeners an overview of who every man is and the work that you're doing in this world. Great. I got into it really back in the late 70s. I ended up in Boulder, Colorado after college and traveling. And one thing led to another and started studying with the leaders and the developers of different kinds of somatic psychotherapies. It wasn't planned. I was just sort of in the right place at the right time. And they changed my life. And one thing led to another. Ended up developing a holistic or integrated medical clinic in Scottsdale. Got burned out, left that. But right before I left that in 95, I uh, started my first men's group because I knew I needed some. I had a lot of personal healing that I went through, but my relationships still weren't where I wanted them to be. They weren't bad, but they weren't good. And I thought that maybe I could learn something from men. And I resisted it, which was a sign that maybe I needed to do it. So I had my first men's group in my clinic. Uh, It was a scary night showing up, but I had to show up because everyone else was showing up. I couldn't back out. And I quickly realized, you know, as we went around the room and did the usual check-in, that I wasn't the only screwed up guy in the room. We all were. And by the end, we were laughing and joking. And so all these scared guys within an hour where, you know, we're having fun about how we were all sort of screwed up. And one thing led to another and I moved to uh, North Idaho. I was frustrated with the traditional model of men's group. So I just said, look, I'm gonna design a group that I would want to be in. And so I designed a new model, asked 11 guys, they all said yes. So I had to show up for that group too. And that was (laughs) the beginning of the Sandpoint men's group which really was the beta for every man. And I don't know how many years ago, we'll say six, seven years ago, Dan Doty came to Sandpoint. It was in the group for six months. You know, I mentored him. He went back to New York. He was one of the co-founders of every man. He got on Joe Rogan, which is really what was a huge launch for us. We weren't even really ready for that. And one thing led to another, and then we got all this other publicity. And over the course of coming on five years, and and Dan has left, but it's now Lucas and me, we probably had well over a thousand guys through our programs and everything else we've done. And we have several different programs. And and then when COVID happened, uh, we quickly ramped up to do what we were slowly doing, which is going virtual. And so now we have a, a virtual membership, which we have not done any outbound marketing on. We have just shy of a thousand guys in that. And it's been really it's amazing word of mouth that we've gotten those thousand guys. And we're at a point where we're ready to do our seed round for funding. And we should have that tied down within a month. And with that, we'll be able to really take what we've learned and failed at and succeeded at and, and leverage it to really deliver men and these other institutions what we've wanted to deliver for a long time. Oh, and that's incredible. Congratulations on all the work you've done putting a thousand men through the in-person training. And there would have been a lot more if COVID hadn't happened. And the seed round for funding, that's amazing. When you raise that those funds, what will that funding provide for men's training? <laughs> well, one of the first things is going to provide us a salary for Lucas and me because we haven't been paid in <laughs> going on five years. <laughs> but you know, that's a big that. secret about men's, <laughs> when men's, work, up, men's work doesn't pay a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's number one. Uh, but our bottleneck is tech. So we're doing a lot by hand. We have an amazing team of men. And that's really our secret to success an amazing team and an amazing community. So it's developing the tech to really leverage what we know. And, you know, with startups, We've, you know, worked, struggled or whatever for these years, but we've learned a lot. Having the money now is going to be a lot more effective than it would have been four years ago. So we pretty much know what we need to build. And then, you know, we'll start really having a marketing uh, program. That's wonderful. I so respect the work that you all are doing. And uh, here's a little fun fact. Your very first Everyman retreat that you did at the Racebrook Lodge back in 2017 you did your first retreat the weekend before I did my first men's retreat at the Racebrook Lodge. And the only reason why I know this is because John O'Connor, oh right, who I think helped co-facilitate, or he was one of the facilitators right. at your, he was there the next weekend helping me facilitate my very first men's retreat. So there was something special happening at the Racebrook Lodge around men's work over that one week period in March to April of 2017. Oh, that's great to know. Yeah, Racebrook is this funky, cozy ex-hippie farm retreat place in southwestern Massachusetts. And uh, we're looking at going back there. We've been, we just did a training at Omega. We did a beautiful one at 1440. We were going to do 
151 at Kapalo, and then COVID happened, and we did some virtual stuff with them. And so we've been at all the premier retreat centers around the country. I love that, man. I got so many questions for you about that. But for our listeners, I know that they're here to to hear more about every man and some of the practices that that are foundational to the work that you do. You know, one of the principles of the work that you do is around getting men to tap into their emotions. And I know a big part of your story, and you talk about this in your TED Talk, is the woman in your life turned to you one day and said, I want to feel you. I can't feel you. So many men have been taught at a very young age to armor up and to not feel their feelings. And it leads us to living a life kind of a a colorless, robotic, disconnected, silos, compartmentalized existence where we're living from the neck up. I'd love to hear, you know, when a man comes into an every man retreat for the first time, an experience, what are you exposing him to with respect to the, the work that you do around emotions? We're exposing him to his own experience. And so my view for decades has been our best teacher, our best guru is experience. Now, the question is, can I experience experience? Can I be present to what's happening? And trauma, stress, the culture has trained us as men not to be present. And so what we're doing with every man, we don't necessarily, you know, lay all this out in a didactical way in the beginning. We we just give the guys an experience. But what we're doing is first creating an emotionally safe space, which is really unique for men. And that might be the biggest thing right there. And then we have particular simple exercises that we do where we get guys to be able and, and actually enjoy connecting to their present experience, because it's all about the present moment, as you know. And our secret to doing that is often we have men first connect to their bodies. Because I was certainly one of these guys to start off, and I think most of us are as men, is if you ask the average guy, what do you feel? Either they're rolling their eyes, or they're looking for the closest door to you know get out of the room. Uh, <laughs> so if you ask them, what do you feel in your, their bodies? You know, they might have to think, and you might have to say, well, I notice you're tapping your foot. Oh, yeah, 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 I feel that. Now I feel this. And after a couple of minutes of them checking in with their somatic experience, and then you ask him, what do you feel emotionally? And it's usually pretty easy because by connecting to their somatic or physical experience, they start to downregulate. They start to connect to their experience in general. They start to open up to their body's experience, which is a setup to open up to their emotional experience. And once they do that, particularly when they do it in consort with other men or a witness of other men, the shaming that they got for being vulnerable or emotional is flipped. And so they are immediately honored and received and witnessed with their vulnerability for being courageous. And then the other thing that happens, which I sort of encourage, is, you know, men are competitive. And so what happens is, and we'll have this with 60 guys in a room, like a, a race book in the bar. And, you know, one guy will take a little risk. The next guy will sort of say, maybe even unconsciously, I'm going to outdo him. I'm going to take a bigger risk. And by the end of going around the circle, guys are sobbing. They're re- saying things they've never said to anyone. It's like, you know, you guys won't be outdone. And then they start to realize, oh, shit, I'm really into this. And I didn't even try to be. But because it's safe, because it's fun, because we're laughing at ourselves, and because we're honoring each other for the things that in other situations we'd shame each other for, yeah. guys immediately start connecting to their emotions. See, I love everything that you said there. And, and one of the first things you said was we create an emotionally safe space, which is unique for men. Someone who's never been in an emotionally safe space, when they hear that, they're probably like, I don't even know what that means, right? Like, I feel safe. I don't feel because I, I remember myself from maybe say eight, nine, ten years ago. I've been like, yeah, I feel safe, but do you really? I used to remember going out with my friends, guys who I love, guys who I grew up with, and if I would broach the topic of anything that had some level of like sensitivity around it, if it didn't have a witty punchline, if it didn't have some humorous, if it didn't involve a woman that I was sleeping with, they would just get bored and tired of it. And then they're like, you know, they'd bust my balls and then we'd move on to the next thing. So I could always feel there was very little space for me to actually just share what was going on in my inner world. So either I would stuff it down or I'd go to the women in my life and I'd share it with them because I felt safe. 
And then to hear you give that example of when you get into a barn at the Racebrook Lodge, 60 guys, and one guy steps forward and he shares instead of that ticking clock, instead of the balls being busted, instead of guys disengaging because it's not entertaining, the exact opposite happens, right? Like the entire space comes together. It's captivating. They are hanging on every word. And then he gets praised for his courage. That is a life-changing moment. Like that is truly a life-changing moment for most men. And I'm speaking directly to the, to the men who are listening right now. If you've never experienced that, you haven't lived yet because everything that Owen is saying here around being able to get to those emotions again starts to change lives. And so Owen, I guess the next step would be in asking the men are in that space. They're breaking down. The emotions are flowing. What happens there inside of that group space? Like, What do you see from the men in terms of their ability to bond with each other? What's the dynamic after that starts to happen? It's pretty much the antithesis of what you just described, which is it was a beautiful description because, yeah, guys in part will start to describe that because every guy's had that kind of experience that you described, Dominic. You know, I certainly have. But at the same time, every guy's had the other part that, you know, like, I really want to connect, but... I can't, I don't know how to, I don't want to be shamed. Even if I lean into it, they're going to just make fun of it. We can't do it. So we have this duality, but once we create the safe space and the first thing we do is we set a, we have a set of ground rules. Yeah. Okay. And that really works for men. Cause you know, women, they can just sit down they can be strangers and they can just get into it and it's fine. As guys, it's like, we need, maybe it's artificial, a structure, a container, and a set of agreements. So we have a set of agreements that they all agree to before they ever show up to. And then we'll review at least the, the cogent parts of that before we start. Like one of them is confidentiality. Another one is you participate at any level you want to participate at. You can just pass. Now, guys don't, but you can. And so it, you are empowered. We're not forcing you. This is not a, a boot camp thing or challenging thing. You participate at whatever level you want to. So right there, it down regulates the survival response, you know, like fight or flight or freeze. I mean, it's like, oh, okay, I get the concept. And, you know, we set it up, you know, we check in first in a vulnerable way. So we model it and we, we you know, we show these guys that, oh, okay, it is safe, we're doing it. And then inevitably, pretty quickly, one guy will take a risk. And then, and as you said, and then it's like a series of dominoes that just keep falling. Yeah. Because underneath every guy, no matter how scared they are or how macho they might be or whatever, they want, we want, and need to connect as real human beings. Yeah. There's this big myth that men don't want to talk about their emotions or express their emotions. Men are dying, literally, like literally dying to express their emotions, but the psychological safety factors have to be met. And what you're talking about is that structure provides the psychological safety. It's confidential. Participate at whatever level you want to. And then the first guy takes a risk, models it, shows how it's done. And then all of a sudden, when they feel it's okay, it's okay to reveal, then like the popcorn kernels pop. You've mentioned this term a couple of times now around checking in. You know, we check in and we model it. What does a check in look like? What's the steps to a check in and what's its purpose? We have a couple of rounds. Of it. So the, the first round is a quick check in 30 seconds. And, the, you know, I'll say to a group is it's all in the present moment. So share what do you feel in your body right now, which, as we said before, sort of primes a pump. And then the next sentence is, what do you feel with your emotions? And we give guys five emotions to start with anger, fear, sadness, shame, and joy. Not that you have to just use those, but we encourage a guy to, you know, at least mention one of those because there's a lot of emotions, but we tend to sort of go to the outer periphery of the emotions rather than the core, more vulnerable, immediate emotions. And then guys just do that. And we say, don't mitigate, don't tell stories, just cut to the chase. And we might guide or support guys because in the beginning, it takes us usually a little coaching to sort of just get maybe not truthful, but just simple with our truth. And pretty quickly, guys learn that. And what happens is you go around a room. It might be a group of six guys in a small men's group, or it might be 60 or more guys in a big room. And everyone has put their foot into the circle. Everyone's participated. 
yes, in theory, someone can step out, but at that point, no one ever does. So everyone's participated and everyone gets a feeling for everyone else and everyone's on the same playing field. And so right there, we've sort of turned the corner from, you know, I'm an outsider, I'm a witness of voyeur to this, to, you know, I'm a participant. I'm in this game. Like it or not, I'm in it. Hell yeah. I love that. And just to get them to step in, as small as it is, a 30-second check-in, their voice is heard, they're in it, that makes them much more likely to step forward into some of the deeper exactly. stuff. So, okay. At the end of a weekend, how long are some of the retreats? Are they three days now or are they two and a half days? Uh, they pretty much start on Friday evening and we go to Sunday after, late afternoon. Great. What do you see, you know, energy wise from the men on Friday when they show up? I can already see it in my mind, kind of like, you know, looking at each other, trying to size each other up. And then what do you see in terms of the transformation Friday, Saturday to Sunday when the men are leaving? You got it. I mean, most guys, and I certainly was one in the beginning when I started all this, it's like we're sitting there, standing there with our arms crossed. And it's like, you know, just sort of on the outside, checking everyone out. Or you're like, you know, a very extroverted guy going around and sort of doing your thing of taking charge and being real friendly or whatever. But guys are pretty much in their survival strategy, whatever it might be which is fine. And then, you know, we all sit down. And one of the things that we do is we do a somatic meditation, you know, might only be five minutes where it gets guys down-regulated, slow down into their bodies, another way into the room together. So that's uh, sort of the foreplay to the check-in. Um, so right there, it starts to calm guys down. And some guys just say, wow, that was really big, you know, and, you know, I feel like I'm present now. And, what we're doing is one little step at a time. And usually by mid Saturday, we've hit critical mass. You know, it's like guys, you know, that were sitting there with their arms crossed now hugging each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Total strangers. Right. right. They and don't it, know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, I've never said this to anyone. And it's like, you know, even my best friend doesn't know this and they're hugging each other, maybe crying their arms, whatever, but they're, they're just real. And that burden of, you call it the survival strategy or the cultural way of being a man, it's just dissolved away. And every guy, no matter their race, their sexual orientation, their age or profession, who just guys, just guys in a, in a room or several rooms being themselves. I love that. And, and you know, that Friday night you talk about where the guys walk in with that survival strategy, we don't realize how we walk into almost every situation in our lives that way. We show up in every situation with those arms crossed, either metaphorically or emotionally speaking, and we don't even realize it because it is so second, it's that unconscious competence around that. What are we sacrificing with that defensive posture? How many times have we missed a connection? How many times have we shown up in fear and being guarded versus what I walk in? I mean, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Owen, but like when you walk into situations now, like maybe Esther Perel's paradox of masculinity or your networking event or whatever, I show up with my chest open, expand. I'm not sizing people up anymore. I'm not looking at who's the alpha dog, who's the threat, you know, where am I, where do I fit in? What's the hierarchy? I just show up with the presence of what am I feeling here and what do I feel from these people here? And it allows me to, to remove that barrier and that armor to connect. So I guess there's two questions here. I'm curious if that's been your experience. And also maybe the trailing question is, what are the benefits that men experience after having gone through a weekend of this kind of training when they go back to their regular lives? You're better than me because I still show up with some of that judging or you know, stalking out the situation. But what's different is that survival approach or stands, I'm not trapped in it. So it, it's like, it's a, a perspective I have, but yes, I'm, I'm coming in much more present. And if I step into that survival perspective, I go, oh shit, you know, I'm back into my defensive or offensive position and not being authentic. And then what I do for myself as a little sort of game is where's my edge? How much can I be authentic in these situations? You know, how can I lean in a little more than I would have before? Because there's always another edge where something will activate me and I will want to go back to my survival strategy. I know that I have the survival strategy. I'm aware of where that edge is. I'm trying to lean into it. And I'm trying to really connect 
to other people. And I know, you know, cognitively, but also experientially, I can't connect to anyone any more than I'm connected to myself, or at least willing to be connected to my own experience. So I start with trying to stay open to whatever experience I'm having, even though I might judge some of those things that I'm experiencing. Because if I can accept my own, quote, negative experience, I'm much more set up to accept someone else's what might be perceived as a negative experience. And then in terms of your other question, the consequence of that is that one of the things that we talk about is co-regulation, which is the scientific term for what happens when we are connected, we co-regulate. When we grew up as kids, we should have learned how to self-regulate through how our parents or caregivers co-regulated with us, how they connected with us and how they would downregulate our survival response, our stress, our reaction, trained our nervous system and the rest of us you know, to calm ourselves. But most of us did not have enough co-regulation as kids. So we're going around hyper-regulated, you know, in, in that survival state, not knowing how to you know connect or co-regulate with anyone or how to self-regulate or downregulate our own survival response. But as guys get into you know, the work with every man in many different ways, they learn to co-regulate. So when they do interact with someone, they're unconsciously and consciously tracking their nonverbals. And so if we're interacting and you know and I'm more present and I'm open and I feel safe, my nonverbals are going to be sending your a set of nonverbals to you that's going to have you feel safe and, and open you up. And that's going to send those nonverbals back to me. And we're going to have a positive spiral where we're going to naturally start to connect. And that's what guys start to see because that behavior or neural wiring is still in us. Yep. It's just that we've unlearned that. And so a lot of what guys are doing with every man is they're relearning or maybe unlearning some other stuff, but relearning how to connect to themselves and to others. Which is something that, again, if you if you haven't ever had those levels of connection where the guards are down, the emotions are flowing, you're connected somatically to your body so you know the feelings, it's really hard to understand the value of that if you've never had it. I can speak for myself personally, quoting Mark Melvin, who's one of the leaders in our community, I feel like a billionaire with respect to the masculine relationships in my life, right? Like I've got dozens of men that I can call on in a given moment who know my inner world, who I can trust when I have something going on in my life to not machine gun fire advice at me, but they can hold that space and listen and they can feel equipped to hold that space without having to fix me. The other side to that is, and I know you talk a lot about the impact on women, is those men who have women in their lives who understand this methodology, like who can stand in that space and have that awareness of, am I in a defensive posture or my partner's bringing a situation to me? Is my a natural inclination to fix it instead to be able to like hold back and hold the space instead? I'd love to hear you know, what you've seen with respect to the men who go through your training and maybe even your own experience of how these men show up for the women in their lives in a more effective way. Yeah, that's a great question because many men come because they're either encouraged, suggested, or required to come. It's like, you, yeah. you do this or I'm out of here. Uh, and we've had that yeah. for years in our groups and, and every man. And at the end, we laugh about it. And so what happens is with every man in our groups is guys have a safe place to practice. Like the New York Times called us, you know, the CrossFit for their emotions. It's a time to have that emotional workout with other guys and you know, have an emotional team, as you sort of referred to, that you can call up if you need support. And because it's a safe emotional space, guys get a chance to screw up. Where in the outer world and in their relationships, they don't. I see, and other men have seen, and so some of the research is supporting this, is guys are getting more and more anxious about doing the right thing in all these relationships. To have a safe place where they can just screw up and it's fine and we all laugh at it, 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 it really relaxes them so they can learn because we know we can't learn if we're tense. If we're in survival, our ability to learn is really limited, particularly in an embodied way. So these guys are experiencing, naturally learning in an embodied way. And then they go home and often without any effort, the women are connected to them. And so there's a joke in my ongoing men's group in that 
the best night for sex is the night of the men's group. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Why do you say that? I want to hear your. Well, yeah. because we got guys that literally <laughs> come in and say, you know, I went home, you know, last week after the group on Wednesday night. And, you know, my wife, who's been on my case, saw me and she started like tearing my clothes off. We yep. had this amazing sex. Yep. And, and, he, and he's, <laughs> he's going, I really didn't do anything. But he also understands that he got so grounded, so connected to himself. And he, he was in this place of what I call vulnerable assertiveness. So he's open and vulnerable, which we, you know, sort of attribute to as a feminine quality, which is really not solely a feminine quality and assertive, but not, you know, angry or disconnected, but present assertive. So he yeah. walks in, he's like charged up, he's embodied. He's just himself. He's the guy that she fell in love with. Yeah. And this is what she's been wanting for maybe years. And suddenly he comes in resonating at that frequency. And that just gets her juices going and boom, you know, they're having passionate sex. I love that. The best night of uh, the best night for sex is men's group night. I mean, we we have some experiences of that, and I'll tell I'll tell one quick story. We do this exercise in our in our in person uh, immersions called the Wild Man, called summoning the Wild Man, and this is a, a tip of the cap to Iron John and Robert Bly. And so we have men channel that dormant part of ourselves that seeks to be free, seeks to be adventurous, but has been tamed, right? Been by society just because we need to be safe. And so these guys for the first time start to like, just let it rip and call on that part of themselves that has been chained up for so long. And they let out these big screams at this last immersion. We had a few of the men who really summoned that wild man version of himself, felt powerful, felt grounded went home, introduced the wild man to their wives and had some of the most intense, amazing connected sex they'd ever had. And their wives were like, go back as soon as you can, get more wild man and bring them back to me <laughs> because it was a part of them that their partners had been craving and they didn't know that it was safe to let that out. And so it's so incredible to hear that the men in your communities are also experiencing that too. It's uh it's something I'm sure a lot of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, our goal is to have it be not only sustainable, but generative. And I think it becomes generative or, you know, it continues to grow once we get to a certain level of embodiment uh, where it's more the default to, to have some of those qualities. It might not be quote of the wild man, obviously, but that's that quality that you're really talking about in its essence of being present, being connected and having the, the courage and having it be sort of natural just to speak your truth and not in a big way, but just, you know, when needed that, that you're not betraying yourself to be someone else. Right on. I know that before we started recording, you talked about the importance of men doing this work in groups. You know, we have a saying here, stop lone wolfing your life. I imagine that in the coaching that you do and the men that you work with, you know, it, it seems that most guys, their first step is to kind of reach out and do a one-on-one -on -one thing. What would you say to the man who, you know, is reading all the books, listening to all the podcasts, consuming all the material, doing his own thing and his education, but you know, through all the work that you've done, that the men's groups and the group work is where it's at. How would you talk to a man who's never had that experience to let him know, here's what goes down and here's why this is so important? It's scary. It is for all of us, and I'm sure it was for you, Dom, like in the beginning to, yeah, yeah, to to go to your first group, go to your first training or whatever. You know, part of me says just do it, <laughs> get over it. <laughs> true, true. It could be that simple. Yeah, that every other guy, even though they might not be showing it, is scared too. That's just human nature, and actually, that scaredness or activation is a key part of the transformation. So, part of it's just doing it, and then. Another way to frame it is that we grow up in a culture where it's top down. Everything's cognitive, analytical analysis, a lot of that in New York. We got cognitive therapy. We got all, you know, the schools that we've gone to, it's all you know, didactical. It's like, you know, the, the meta belief is if I know it, understand it, I will have it. And that's true with certain things. And you need to know certain things. I mean, if you're designing a bridge, you need to be a well-trained engineer. Now, for what we're talking about, it needs to be bottom up. 
it needs to be grounded in the body, somatic and emotional first. And then the understanding comes last. And, and as guys, we been trained to, and because it's easier and quote safer, we want to understand it first with the belief that if I get a real understanding of this, I can shortcut the experience. And what happens is, you know, we're smart guys. We read the books, as you said, and, you know, and, and study stuff and we learn and we think we understand it. And then particularly, you know, we're talking to our spouse from a place of understanding and she's either checking out, getting pissed or whatever, because as you said about my TED talk, or TEDx talk, you know, what got me into this was my girlfriend at the time said, I don't feel you. And I was debating, not really arguing, but debating with her, trying to convince her as if it was a logical argument <laughs> that I was, you know, feeling myself and she should feel me. And then suddenly it just dawned on me was, as I heard myself speak, it was all mental words using quote emotional words in the sentences, but right. there was no emotional experience. And no wonder she didn't feel me because I wasn't feeling me. And I realized that, you know, if my partner was going to feel me, I had to start feeling myself. And it was like, where do I go to do that? Well, maybe I could do that with men. Hey, I love what you just said about, I, I was using emotional words in the sentences to describe to her, but like none of that was transmitting from me. And there's a very big difference. I mean, in, in the work that we do, we can see the Grand Canyon size gap between the words that are leaving a man's mouth and then the energy he's transmitting. If he hasn't done this work, it's oftentimes it's leaps and bounds apart from each other. There's a huge gap. The men who do this work, there is a congruency between the words he's speaking and what he's emanating and transmitting. And when that happens, that man becomes more trustworthy, right? Even when he's angry, even when he's frustrated because there's such authenticity in what's coming through and mm -hmm. what the words that are coming out, what's being transmitted, there's alignment there. And that's the, the nonverbals. That, that's when men become leaders of other men. One of my biggest edges over the last four or five years is learning to lead men. It was easy for me to lead in a corporate space, in a corporate structure. I spent 15 years there. But then coming out into this world and trying to gain men's trust mm -hmm. and to lead them when I had no authority previously, the way that I was able to do that was through this work and having that alignment. So when a man feels me, he can tell very quickly that I'm either in alignment or I'm not. We, we all pick up on it. So it sounds like the work that you're, you know, that the work that you're really honing in on is helping men to, to bring that synchronicity between the words that are leaving the mouth and the energy he's transmitting. Yeah. I have a great quick little story about that. I mean, you're right. When we're authentic, people want to follow us. They just, and without even thinking about it, because they want the connection and they feel that we're, we're connected and we're authentic and that we're dialed into something. And, they, and it's like, I want what he has. My partner is a couples therapist and we do couples trainings every you know, quarter or so. And, and we do a little teaching and we send the couples off in, you know, different places. And I go around and I sort of work with it the couple and inevitably you know what happens is the woman sitting there and something you know it's like sometimes a gay couple or lesbian couple but usually it's the woman sitting there and she's getting more and more frustrated and he's doing what you described he's using all his emotional words and and he's working he's really working hard to be emotional her arm starts to cross her jaw starts to get rigid and he sees that he's reading the nonverbals, and that stress just makes him more intense and more disconnected and so vicious cycle so i say all right can i help of course they say yes and and then we'll say his name is john said so john can can i just sort of model for you what she wants and he goes yeah 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 and so i channel him for like a couple of minutes you know i just sort of sit in there and i sort of get a sense of who he is and and their relationship so i literally just sort of channel him and say in an emotional way to her and look look her straight in the eye what he's feeling but can't say and she starts to cry inevitably. Wow. Because this is what she's always wanted to hear. Yeah. So, and he's watching me, a guy that doesn't know anything, get the results, the, the opposite of what he's getting, just because <laughs> I'm using those words and they're connected to my experience, even though I'm not him and I, I don't have that relationship. And then I say to him, I want you to practice this. And I start coaching him. No, no. All right. You're back to using just the words. Now, what do you feel? Speak from that feeling. And he starts to get it. 
And the feedback is those interventions can be life-changing for those relationships because yeah. she knows he still loves her. But as a human being, she needs to feel it. Like my girlfriend, she she knew it, but women and partners just need to feel it. And if they don't feel it, they don't have what attachment theory calls secure attachment. And so go into their survival response, which we don't want or, or usually like. Well, I think a lot of men can relate to the experience you just talked about when they think about their father. It's like, I knew my father loved me. He just never hugged me. He never, he never told me he loved me. Like I could feel it on an intellectual level, I guess, or I could think that, but I never really felt it. And, and it's the, it's, it's similar in respect to, you know, women who are saying, I want to feel you. I want to connect with you. So that's a beautiful story that you were able to get those results just by channeling him and giving her that experience and giving him that ability to, to see what a modeling looked like. I do want to take a turn here. Because you're doing some really exciting work bringing this out of the, the barn in uh, Racebrook Lodge in Sheffield, Massachusetts, and you're actually bringing this into some corporate spaces, to doing work in tech or doing work with municipalities. And that really surprised me to hear that, that you have these corporate contracts or business contracts. It's one thing to get a man to sign up on his own volition to come up and you know do a weekend retreat like this. It's another thing to get men who haven't signed up for this, but their employer says, you need to come and work on your emotions. And I'm curious, maybe maybe you bill it differently when you're in, you know, in that space. Maybe it's more leadership training. I bet, I bet it is. Can you talk a little bit about what is the, the work that you're doing with the tech companies, with the municipalities, and how's that going? It's going really well. And you're right. We frame it a little differently. And one of the things that we emphasize is, is a physiology. We call it you know, emotional physiology. We take it out of emotions and sort of put it into physiology. And we do this, you know, our trainings, particularly when we start training men to do our work. And we, we dive heavily into the physiology of stress and you know, trauma and all that. But I learned years ago when I had my clinic that if you talk to most guys initially about emotions, they want to leave the room, they you know, disconnect, whatever. But you can talk to guys about the body and about stress. Everyone you know, knows they have stress. And then you talk to them about the physiology of stress and you get into it, that with them. And there's more and more science around what that is and more and more science around, particularly with Stephen Porges' work with uh, polyvagal theory about what happens and how you can you know, change or heal that. And I've been fortunate to have studied with these founders in the field starting 40 years ago. So it's been sort of embedded in me. And what we do with these B2B clients is that we frame it around, all right, if you want to be a leader, and I'm simplifying it, you got to embody it. And to embody it is you can't be in a stress response because if you're in a stress response or survival response, yeah, these are all the things, and they sort of know it, we just list them. And these are all the things that are going to take you out and your leadership out. But when you're in this other state of congruence, co-regulation, and we got a lot of terms and you know and science to use to sort of describe the other state, it's easier. You're in a flow state. People connect to you. You're in collaboration and all the things that you want. And everyone talks about this stuff, but no one comes at it from a bottom-up perspective. Everyone pretty much comes at it from a top-down perspective. Now, some people are starting to uh, percolate down into talking about the science of it, but what makes us distinctive here is we don't only talk about the science, but we have ways, simple ways, safe ways, even for in these corporate settings, for guys to experience a physiology that sets them up to be their own natural leaders. Which is amazing. And I'm, I'm curious, have you, have you started to hear some of the success stories of how their leadership style has started to elevate and evolve and its impact on the businesses. Yeah. When I have time, I have a private coaching practice. And so my clients are entrepreneurs or, or C-level executives. So but here's the deal. Most of them come to me, the vast majority, because they have a relationship issue. Some because their wife has found me or whatever, but whatever, they, they're coming for that. And, you know, I ask for a six month commitment. Usually within three months, they've turned around their relationship. I mean, it's not in, but they're going in a new direction. So and then they're starting to come with like, you know, oh, and I started applying this stuff to work. And I think there's something to it. 
So basically, they we start working with this model and applying it in the work setting. But once they've learned it themselves and learned it with a primary relationship, learning it at work gets a lot easier. And then we keep working and tweaking with that. But we start again with the foundation of the physiology and the emotions. And then how can they accentuate that, stay in that flow state to really be that leader that is a lot less stressful. Oh, and this has been a really powerful conversation. And I imagine there are going to be some men who are listening here who are ready to take that next step and to actually, you know, stop lone wolfing, to move forward and do some work. Where would you point them to get this next experience, especially if they're if they're interested in exploring every man? Yeah, I think point them to our website. We are back online with doing um, live events, but I would really encourage them to um, become a member get into our group, but the way that we set it up now, which we just found from experience works best for everyone, we have a four-week virtual course called the Fundamental Course, which is a, an experiential course. It's virtual, and we teach the fundamental skills, not just principles, but the skills of what we use that makes every man work successful, and we do it through group experiences, and that really is huge for a lot of the guys. And then if they want to, and we encourage them to, you know, get into an ongoing group. And then as a member, they have access to what we call the digs or drop-in groups and other things that we do on the platform, plus a discount to our live events, which I'm amazed at what a man can get virtually, but there's nothing like a live event. That's so true. And just for perspective, the four-week virtual course, what are you charging for that these days? Uh, less than $300. And to become a member of every man? It's $28 a month. That's great. I know our men are be interested in that. So I'm going to link all of that in the show notes. And then someone who's interested in exploring more about Owen, I know you've written a few books. Um, I know you got a course on your own website. I'm going to link your website in the show notes, but someone who's coming to your website, where would you direct them? Uh, just to my website. I mean, there's a page on, on the website where I do coaching and yeah, and it's really... Um, taking everything that I've learned and, and learned with every man and, and applying it on a one-to-one -one basis. But I'm always encouraging guys to take what they're getting from the coaching and accentuate it by getting into a group. And most of these guys do, and it really accelerates their growth. And most of them end up being members. Many of them, you know, I've had guys fly from Europe to do one of our retreats after, you know, being a, a coaching client. So yeah, it's like, and it, you sort of inferred this, you know, on the outside, we don't realize what the potential and opportunities are once we get on the inside of these experiences. So you change. But the other thing that was a real surprise for me is the kind of relationships you get with these men, which are so authentic and often, you know, for the rest of your life. I mean, I know guys that now are in groups for 30 years. You know, my group in Sandpoint's going into the 18th year. And I'm, even though I'm not living there anymore, I'm still part of one of our groups, which is a, a Zoom group. And these guys are, you know, often friends for life. And we've seen everything happen in these groups over the years. And these guys are there for you. As one of my old friends said, these men will be your pallbearers. That is so true. I love that. Oh, and to conclude this, I just want to pay you a debt of gratitude for being one of the pillars, one of the men who's laid the foundation for men like me. You've been doing personal development work for 40 years, You know, men's work for many decades. And I've really only discovered men's work specifically for the last, I think, six or seven years. I've been on my own personal development journey for about 10 or 11 now. And the resources that are out there, the awareness that, that men have about inner work, the fact that every man has been featured by the New York Times and on Joe Rogan, and I think it was either like the Today Show or whatnot, the fact that you are bringing such publicity and you've put thousands of men through this training speaks volumes for getting guys to wake up to this. Because that's the first stage. If, if you don't know this exists, you're never going to get on that path. And as someone who, you know, in me, I'm dedicating the rest of my life to this work. And I see that you've done that. You made that choice many years ago. It's inspiring that you've been blazing that trail. So I just want to say thank you for someone who's following in your footsteps. Well, thank you. And thank you for picking up the torch and, you know, leading men into this. Uh, and I know what it feels like you know, to sponsor other men, because I know from myself, and, and that's another thing that guys experience that they never would have thought is once they get in it, they want to help other men. So true. And so we have what we call the foundation training, where we train men uh, to be facilitators. And some of those men, you know, in, in the past, a lot of them 
took that into being coaches because it, it made such a difference for them that either on a full-time basis or on a part-time basis, they want to do what you just described. They want to give it back to other men. Yeah. I'll put that as a, uh, a cautionary tale for a lot of you guys, because your lives may change. You might want to come and throw hundred percent of your work in this world behind this. We've already sitting with guys in our community, leaving corporate professions. It's a reality because guys feel called. It's a purpose that was previously uh, like an itch that was previously unscratched. So, Owen, thank you again for everything. Thanks for your time. And I'm going to link your website and every man's website in the show notes. Hey, fellas, I got some great news for you. If you were lit up by what you heard from Owen Marcus and want to do more work or at least explore and dip your toes in the water with what every man's got going on, Owen generously came back with a 20% off discount code for that four week Every Man Fundamentals course that he and I spoke about during the interview. So, the Every Man Fundamentals course is a four week online intensive to begin your journey of more meaning, connection, and joy in your life. It gives you exposure to the way that every man does inner work with men. That program is 350 bucks and the 20% off coupon will get you $70 off, which is a great deal. And that 20% off coupon is also available if you wanted to add the year long membership to every man. And so the year long membership plus the fundamentals course is 545 bucks. 20% off will get you about $110 off, which is a great deal. So in the show notes, I am linking the link to that webpage with all the information about the fundamentals course, the annual membership, and the discount code, which is great, man. I put that in the show notes for you as the discount code for 20% off. And hopefully you guys can see that even if you're not doing work with me directly, but you're doing work with some of the great men and men's groups that are out there. And that's a win for everybody involved. We're not competing with other men's groups. We're all on the same journey together. So go check them out. Link is near the top of the show notes.